I remember sitting on the steps outside the stadium and saying to my assistant coach at the time, like, I can't do this. Like, I, I, I don't know what to do. Like, we're doing everything right. Everything. I was sitting on my sofa in Birmingham watching the TV and my phone rang and it was just a Seattle number. And I thought it was a cold call. So I just answered it. And it was Seattle Rain saying, are you interested in coming over to a league that you don't know about and a club that doesn't exist um, to start something new? And my brother lives in America and he did live in America then. He lives in LA. And um, so I'd been out to the States a lot. I didn't like the summer coaching years before where I'd done like coaching clinics out here. And there was just a a... a a desire to see what America was. You know, I'd I'd come out and watched some of the World Cup in 1999. I'd come out and watched the professional league when Kelly Smith was playing in Philadelphia. I actually watched one of her games in Northern California. Um, so there was just this one of like, oh, that could be interesting. One day, like one day, maybe I'll go to America and maybe like see what it's like. And And probably at the time, Obviously, the the old league had just folded where Kelly Smith and Alex Scott and Katie Chapman had just come back from. Um, I feel at that moment there was still in the women's game for the majority of people in Europe and especially in England, if America was something that was put on offer to you, it was part of your bucket list of like, that's something that as a player and, and as a coach, oh, that's something I might, might want to do, like, tick that off my bucket list and and honestly that was what turned my head really was oh this could be interesting and yeah and again I've told this story a lot like I didn't know what I was walking into I thought I was walking into an established setup really like a club that existed because Seattle has the Sounders which is a very successful men's team over here has a ton of history um but the two teams were not linked at all and when I got here, I realized, okay, this isn't, we're starting from nothing. We didn't have anything, not a cone, anything. And I was like, okay, well, this is going to be different. And it was nice to start something from scratch because Arsenal was the complete opposite of that. You know, I'd go and walked into a club that had a ton of tradition, taken over from Vic Akers, who's like the greatest women's football coach ever in terms of trophies won to something where there's no history there's nothing like we can create our own journey um so that was quite appealing at the time um and yeah coming to America and seeing what what it could look like was probably the biggest biggest driver were you, were you a different coach when you arrived in Seattle do you think to the one that took over at Arsenal yeah I knew who I wanted to be I knew how I wanted the game to be played. What I didn't know was how the game was really played over here. And was that was, oh yeah, yeah, dramatic. Over here, it's very transitional. And I look, actually watch them, obviously watch a lot of the men's Premier League now. And I feel like the men's Premier League is a very... Uh, just the style of the, the games, very similar to America, where, you know, I watch, I'm an Arsenal fan. I watched Arsenal Man United the other day and Arsenal are dominating and playing and playing and then boom, Man United win the ball, bump goal. And that's what it's like here. You can be so dominant in possession. You can outpass everybody and you could lose 4-0 because in transition, they're so, so good. And I didn't realise that coming here. I didn't really realise, I hadn't studied the American game well enough. And at the time, there wasn't a ton of like TV coverage or even video available um, to watch the American game much. So when I came over here and we started to play, we dominate games possession-wise, but we just get annihilated because we couldn't deal with their transition. We just, and I picked players that I wanted because they could play. They could technically be sound enough 
to execute what we needed to do, but we just didn't have the cutthroat transitional players that could just change a game in an instant. And one of the players we had on our team at the time was Megan Rapino, but she was playing in Lyon at the time. So we didn't have her at the first part of the season. And we actually went nine games without a win, um, which was brutal. Absolutely. How did it, how did it make because you feel as a coach that? Did it, did it sort of make you question everything that you did? Everything. Every decision, everything I'd ever, like, what, honestly, I just remember sitting, uh, we played Portland away in the July of 2013. And I remember sitting on the steps outside the stadium and saying to my assistant coach at the time, like, I can't do this. Like, I, I, I don't know what to do. Like, we're doing everything right. Everything. We're, we're defending the goal well. We're playing out of the back really well. We're actually hurting teams and they're just killing us in these moments. Like, and we couldn't get, you know, when you get in those runs as well, like you get a penalty against you that's not a penalty. You get, you know, a corner against you that's not a corner, it leads to a goal. Like everything goes against you, you know. And then Megan Rapino turned up, honestly. <laughs> and it changed overnight. And Hope Solo, we had Hope Solo in goal. She came a few games before Megan. But between the two of them, Hope making world-class saves that we just hadn't been able to do before and adding sort of this presence of, you know, I am, we are not going to concede. And Megan being able to hit people in transition with quality changes overnight. And then we went to a team that could actually win a game and we won five of our last seven, I think. Still ended up finishing second from bottom, but we won five of our last seven and it was like, okay. We're close.